Hello everyone, in this brief tutorial we're going to take a look at the UV uh, text tool uh, and why it can sometimes go wrong and how we resolve these issues. So we have a basic shape here and it does have curvature, it's been wrapped to um, a cylinder. Now the UV text tool is in our tools and cutters text and UV space, okay, and it places text as the name suggests, on a surface based on the UV curves of that surface. And we can view these UV curves or ISO curves from within the wireframe tab. We have our ISO curve on face. And if we can just place it using our last method, the third method, on the face, increase our number of U and V curves, and we see the structure, the way this face is built up. It's essentially built up. Um, using a series of curves that are our U curves and our V curves and they're perpendicular to one another. Okay, and you can see that these are running in a, this sort of a crosshatch pattern, horizontal and vertical. So our text is going to follow this uh, curvature, well, lack of curvature in this case. So if we come into our UV uh, text tool, Okay, we have the option to change some font, but I like to keep it with the Arial Black. The text, let's just create some simple text. Font size, we'll bring it down to something appropriate. This is uh, relates to millimeter size. And we'll try and place it. So here we see our UV text preview. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees. And we'll increase our spacing. Okay, so there is our text, we confirm it, and this um, text is now brought in as curves on our surface. Okay, and like I said, it follows our UV curves, in this case they're just top to bottom, so there's no curvature in this text. And ideally we, we would like our text to follow the curvature of the shape. So we're going to come into that in just a moment, how we can rebuild our surface and change our UV curves. Okay, but let's just give this a go uh, with our inlay. We go into our shape, inlay, sometimes seen under the merge. Pick our face and pick our curves. I'm going to use the shift key to chain pick all of these curves. Let's do a negative 0 0.5, that's fine. Okay, and there we have our inlay and it seems nice and clean. If anything, there's a bit of waviness here. And this is often caused just by our curves not being coincident, entirely coincident on our, on our surface. And that happens for whatever reason, but a simple way to resolve this is to just project all of our curves to our surface again, just to ensure that they're perfectly matched to that surface. So I'm just using the project face tool, project the curves to the face, Okay, just making sure they're perfectly coincident on that face. Try the inlay again, and hopefully that waviness will have disappeared. Okay, it was in the corner here, and it's no longer there. Okay, so that is a nice, solid uh, inlay. You may wish to um, concatenate your curves, your text curves, where possible, thereby getting rid of these additional edges. Okay, it'll just be one complete edge. But in the case with text, yeah, it's not always necessary unless maybe you want to add some fillets. Again, you can always use a loop fillet, for example. It's not really going to be an issue. Okay, so this one's fine, but like I said, we want to have our text matching the curvature of this shape. We don't want it straight across and top to the bottom like that. So in order to do this we have to modify our ISO curves. Okay, at the moment our ISO curves are this cross hatch pattern. We don't want them to be like this. So to recreate our ISO curves we have to recreate the surface. So the first step is to erase this face. Okay, now a simple way to just rebuild the surface is using our n-sided and we have a single edge here drop it on that edge and confirm and then we'll check it out, we'll see what effect this has had on our iso curves 
it's had a big effect. Okay, you can see that it has now changed our ISO curves to sort of follow this curvature of this uh, surface. Okay, that's no longer a crosshatch pattern from just vertically up to horizontally across. So this should give us a better UV um, performance, the one that we want. Okay, so I'm going to edit the UV text and just re-pick a point on here. Probably have to take out that rotation. And then you can see it's conforming to the these new UV curves. It's following this curvature of the shape there. Confirm it there. Okay, we can edit the project. We may as well project them. Why not? Just repick the face. This just ensures we're going to have to unpick all. Repick this face. Just making sure that they are nicely placed on that surface. Edit the inlay. We're going to have to repick the face again and the curves. And I use the shift. Okay, you may consider creating your curves, your UV text in a different color and then using an attribute filter to pick them. It can make things easier. Okay, in this case, my inlay is failing. Okay, we have no result there. So we have to think about why this is failing. Okay, in this case, I'm going to move on from the inlay. Sometimes the inlay has issues based on surfaces. So let's try our second strategy for creating an inlaid text. That is to come to the freeform tab, split with curves. We split our surface with our curves. Okay, this is going to separate surfaces. So we now we have new faces in here. And we can simply do a face offset of these surfaces. The same uh, offset we have for the inlay, negative half a millimeter. Okay, and it's failing. Okay, we get it a result for smaller uh, offsets, but as we go deeper, we want the deepness there. We are unable to get that offset. And we have to think about why this is. It's clearly an issue with our surface since the prior surface worked with no trouble. Okay, so we have to analyze our surface, think about how it could be having trouble. And my immediate thought is that our UV text, or sorry, our UV curves, they are converging to a single point. So if I show them again, you can see our UV curves, they converge to this point here. Now, whether or not this is an issue for the surface, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but it, it makes sense to me that the software will have a bit of trouble um, interpreting a surface when these UV curves are tending to basically an infinite point. Okay, There's no clear endpoint. They're all converging to uh, infinity. If we keep zooming in, they're getting closer and closer to each other. So I want to try and help this out. I'm going to create the surface differently. I'm going to come back prior to that surface patch. Okay, So I want to create it using a bi-rail loft this time. That way I can dictate entirely my starting points and my end points for my UV curves. Okay, and I do this, since I have a single edge here, I need to split this edge up into four different parts. So it comes to my heel tab, I have a split edge command. See a single edge here, I pick the edge, and I select a point to split it first of all. Make sure my entity filter is set to edge. So let's split it here. Okay, two edges. Middle click, I'm going to split it again here. Okay, three edges. And then I want to split it at the opposite end. We have a split there already. Let's split it here. Okay, so I have four edges now. And these edges are, I'm going to use for my bi rail loft. I'm going to have two paths here. And it's going to sweep this edge around these two paths, between the two paths all the way over to this edge. By rail loft, pick these two paths and then the profiles this edge to this edge. I'm going to keep the sew so it uh, sews it all together and creates a closed shape. Okay, so now our UV curves, 
you can see they're not converging. Whilst they're still running along the, sh the uh, curvature of the shape, they're not converging to a single point. They're converging, converging to their own point on this edge. And in my mind, this is easier for the software to comprehend. So let's try our UV text again. Repick the point on the surface. I guess we need that rotation in again. We still have our curvature there. Let's just replay our project just to be sure. And I'm going to get rid of the divide. I want to try the inlay first of all. That is my preference with this because then I can add a draft, which I do recommend. Okay, so it works now. And that looks uh, fairly tidy. Okay, so I do often recommend if you take this to manufacture adding a small draft to your inlays, okay? So maybe test it out with something small, five. And you can start off with the base method. Okay, it's a tiny draft. Redefine, let's increase it, maybe a 10. Okay, we have a draft, but it's throwing things off here on the M, so let's redefine it and try a different method. Let's go for the offset. That appears fine. The mid, just check it out, see if it's any better. Okay, I think I like this one the most. Okay, and why do we add a draft? Well, it just makes things a little bit easier at the manufacturing stage. Not always, but uh, it just makes sense that things are going to be less likely to get caught in there, less likely to be stuck during the casting stages. Okay, and less likely to cause breakages. Okay, you don't really want to have some nasty dented edges. Okay, so this is how we get our text in UV space. And there's some common problems there that we've encountered and how to resolve them. Usually it comes down to the surface. Sometimes you will encounter issues with the curves themselves. Always make sure you check out your curves that you have no intersections, it's nice clean vertices, there's no, no gaps. You want to make sure you have nice curves as well. In this case they are nice. Like I said you can create your UV curves in a different color. This sometimes makes things easier for picking them. You can use your attribute filter. Uh, I don't have this in my document aware toolbar right now. Let me add it in. Okay, you can use your attribute filter if you say you had a very busy screen with many different curves. You can set your UV text to be a specific color and then pick it red, curves only, and then you'll pick only the red curves, your UV curves. Okay, so I hope that was useful for using the UV text tool.